If you are interested to know how a mechanical engineer applies his understanding onto karate, this video, in fact this YouTube channel, is for you. Like, share and subscribe. In this video, I will be talking about a mechanical engineering concept called coupling and modeling your body as a rack and pinion. Firstly, I would like to recommend to you two of my other videos. So this is the first time that I'm directly referencing my engineering background. I graduated with a master's degree in mechanical engineering about 10 or 11 years ago. Though I never practiced engineering as a career, I use this understanding in karate. So now that you know that, if you go back to my very first video, the three momentums, you will notice the engineering lingo and explanations in karate. This holds true throughout the Kion Mechanics series, following after that until this video. This is the first video that I would like to recommend to you. The second video that I would like to recommend to you is the No Arm Punch. What I demonstrate in that video will be exactly what I will be explaining in this video. So before I go on, I must first say that I'm not innovating these karate techniques in any way. They have been the way they are for many generations. What I am doing is sharing with you how someone qualified in mechanical engineering understands and interprets and explains karate techniques. So the trick behind producing a fast and strong shutoke, or any basic block in fact, is an engineering concept called coupling. Coupling is the engagement of two rotating shafts to provide power transmission from one shaft as the power source and the other shaft as the output. A coupling could be in exact alignment, at an angle, and even at an offset, like this. A good example of coupling is in the transmission system of your car, or more specifically, the clutch. When you are in free gear, the shafts are uncoupled and behave as two independent freely moving parts. But when you are in gear 1, gear 2, or at any gear, the shaft that is connected to the wheel is now transmitting power from the shaft that is connected to the engine. The two components of your body for a fast and strong shutoke that requires you to be able to couple and decouple at will are your hips and your arm. However, the setup of your hips and arm does not resemble two rotating shafts. In fact, it resembles more of a rack and pinion combination. So a pinion is a circular gear, whereas a rack is a linear gear. The system translates rotational motion into linear motion. As a side note, in engineering, the rack and pinion isn't normally used for power transmission. It's normally used as an actuator. For example, your steering wheel. Regardless, the first thing we're going to do is instead of performing on Nikoshidachi or Okotsudachi, we will be going to be standing on Heikodachi instead. While imagining your hips as the pinion and your arm as the rack, by coupling the two components at the right time, you will translate rotational power from your hips into linear power in your arm. Before moving on, I must first say that amongst all the basic blocks in Karate, I find that the Shutoke, or more specifically Shitoryu's variation of Shutoke, is the most difficult to learn. And this is because Shitoryu is a blend of Nahate and Shurite. Nahate techniques are mostly short, and they compensate that with circular motion to generate momentum for power. Ryu and Tun Ryu are examples of pure Nahate. Shurite techniques, however, are mostly linear and they utilize distance to generate momentum for power. 
various shorin ryu in Okinawa are examples of pure shurite, or shurite with a mix of tomarite. Whether shurite and tomarite are really two different systems is debatable. Shotokan is an example of modified shurite. I'm going to describe to you Shotokan to explain to you why shintoryu techniques are difficult to learn. The founder of Shotokan, Funokoshi Kitchen, and his son, Giko, modified shurite to make it more appealing to the masses. For one, they make it more Japanese-ish. And secondly, the techniques were further exaggerated, making it even longer with more obvious intermediate movements. For example, when you learn Gyanbai, it's like this. One, two, one, two. Or when you do your poke on Zen Kostachi. One, two, one, two. Or Chutoke on Kukotsudachi. You start with one, two, one, two. Now, Shitoryu, however, lacks this exaggeration. In fact, the principle behind Shitoryu techniques is to eliminate this exaggeration and intermediate movements. Though it has its advantages, that it is less telegraphic, it is more difficult to learn. Mabuni Kenwa, the founder of Shitoryu, blended Nahate and Shurite evenly, making Shitoryu's technique considerably short, although not as short as Kojuryu, but utilizing linear motion. This means that we aren't able to utilize circular motion to generate momentum for power. Or, in other words, Shitoryu techniques are linear but short, meaning that we can't utilize distance to generate power. Which is why we need to use the rack and pinion coupling analogy. I will be going through how to train the Shitoke using these two engineering principles. But for this video, I will make it brief as I do not want to be too lengthy. I will be going into the details with the do's and the don'ts in the next video available very soon. So, in summary, number one, stand on Hikurachi and practice the hips. And number two, adding in the shutoke. First, get the final structure correct, get the intermediate position correct, then train on a single hand. With the hips and the hand. Then train the other hand. Number three, train alternating hands consecutively. So it's switching hands. And finally, adding in the Nikosh that chain with the same principle. Thank you for watching to the end. If you found this useful, please like. If you have any questions or anything to say, please comment. And most importantly, please subscribe and hit the bell button. Look out for the next video where I go into details of this training.